Hello world, I am Colin and welcome to Harness Money in 2022. It is a great time to be alive and a great time to invest in the market. Every year I like to reassess what are my financial goals and do they line up with my long-term vision for my life? Do my goals serve me or do I need to adjust them and make changes? What I love about the beginning of every single new year is that the clock resets for all of your tax advantage accounts. This is where I like to start with my financial goals, with my financial plan, is my tax advantage accounts. I am an employee. I work for myself on my own businesses, but I also have a full-time job with an employer. And there are lots of accounts that you can take advantage of working for an employer that have tax benefits over just a traditional stock brokerage account. If you invest into a traditional stock brokerage account, you're going to be paying taxes on long-term capital gains or any short-term buy and sell actions that you make in the market. But if you invest into your retirement accounts, then you are delaying or you are benefiting from delaying paying your taxes at that time. So let's dig into all of the accounts that I personally am taking advantage of, and I think this will apply to many, many people out there as well. Now, these are the accounts that I am taking advantage of as an individual working for a private um, employer. There are other accounts available to other populations. So if you work for a government agency, if you work at a nonprofit, if you work at a hospital, or if you are self-employed, there are different accounts that will apply to you. But generally, these accounts will apply to the majority of the workforce that works in the private or um, publicly traded company sector. There are three big accounts that I like to take advantage of and that I try to max out every single year to get as many tax benefits as possible. And you know it, you use it, the very first one is going to be the 401k. They have increased the amount of money that you as an individual can put into your 401k account for 2022. Right now, the maximum that you can put into your account is $20,500 each and every year. You can't put more money into that account unless you are self-employed, unless you have a different type of account that you are putting money into. So my first goal is always to try and max out that account because it has tax ramifications on your income. If you make $100,000 per year and you put the maximum into this 401k plan, then you can reduce your income by $20,500. You're delaying paying taxes until you have to start withdrawing that money when you reach retirement. So you can invest into the market $20,500 and take advantage of the compounding effect of putting that money into the market usually for decades. I'm fairly young, I'm in my 30s, so I have decades before I can ever withdraw this money and really use it to its full potential. And I am totally fine with that. I love the idea of putting money aside and having it compound for years. So I am really going to try and first max out my 401k. The next, the second account that I always try to max out is my Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is an individual retirement account. You have to set this up on, on your own. Your employer is not going to set this up for you. You have to go out and do it yourself or work with a financial person to help you get this set up. And for that, I use M1 Finance. I love the software that M1 Finance provides, low fees, it's super easy to use, and it just has everything that I need in a financial account, I would recommend this. I'm not getting paid, This there's no sponsorship. It's just what I like to use and what I will be using in the future. Now, the most that you can put into this account is $6,000. The government limits how much you can put into a Roth or a traditional IRA because of the tax benefits. 
because there are tax benefits to putting this money away. You have two different options with an IRA. You have the traditional IRA and you have the Roth. Traditional is like your 401k. It reduces your taxable income by $6,000. The Roth is the opposite. It doesn't reduce your income by $6,000, but you don't have to pay tax when you go to withdraw the money at retirement. So with the traditional, if you put money in, it reduces your income today, but you have to pay taxes on that money when you go to withdraw it in the future. Not true with a Roth. A Roth, you put money in it today, you pay the taxes on it today, and then decades from now, when it's time to withdraw the gains, you don't have to pay taxes on that money, which is what I love, which looks so much more attractive. So you put money in today, you let it compound, and then once you have a bigger nest egg, you can withdraw that tax-free. I always try to max that out each and every year. And then finally, number three, the third account that I like to use is the HSA, Health Savings Account. This is probably the best of the 401k and the Roth IRA is the health savings because it has the most advantages. I won't go into all of the advantages that a health savings account has. I have other videos where I go in depth on how I invest into the health savings account. So go watch those videos about how I specifically invest in all the advantages there are with an HSA, but I like to max this account out because it is tax deductible. The money that you put into the health account comes off your income, and then you get to use that money to uh, spend it on healthcare. And healthcare is not getting any cheaper. It's only getting more expensive, especially as everybody gets older, you need more healthcare as time goes by. So I love the idea of having a nest egg specifically for my healthcare when I reach retirement age. I know it will be there. I know that I will be able to spend that money and be taken care of. Now, the contribution amount did increase this year for how much you can put into this account. So this year, it is 2022, it is $3,650 is how much you are allowed to put into your health savings account. If I were an, another individual, I would actually look at maxing this account out first before the Roth, before the 401k. The 401k, you're getting a lot of times money from your employer. Your employer puts money into that account on top of what you do, but it usually isn't enough to max out the account. Your employer is usually not gonna put $20,000 into your 401k for you. They're usually just gonna match some amount that you put into that account. So go ahead and get that automatically set up when you go to work for your, um, your company, but always try and max out your HSA as quickly as possible because it has the most benefits of any of the retirement accounts, in my opinion. The way that I choose to max out these retirement accounts and even invest into the stock market is by creating money rules. I like to set up systems that will move money for me into all of my different accounts, into all of my different investments without me actually having to take any action. So I have a system where I get paid from my employer or from one of my side hustles and the money goes directly into my checking account and from the checking account into all of the different investment accounts that I have. I like to do it on a weekly basis. If I set it up myself, whether through Fidelity with my HSA or with M1 Finance, for my Roth IRA, I set those up to do weekly, to move money from my checking weekly into my investments accounts. So I'm always putting a little bit of money into the market. Now the, um, the 401k is done on a uh, two times a month, so roughly every two weeks based on my employer schedule and based on my paycheck. Money it comes out directly out of my paycheck into the 401k, but I try to create as many systems as possible so I don't have to do as much work as, um, I don't know, as I would have to do on my own if I actually had to go in and click buy these investments or move this money from my bank to the account. Now, 
Once you are finished, once you have maxed out all of your retirement accounts, I then like to move on to my brokerage. Make sure that you have everything, everything taken care of on the tax advantage accounts before you move on to your brokerage or just your regular stock account. Now, there are benefits and drawbacks to each different investment um, style. If you're investing into your brokerage, that's money that you have access to today that you can put money into and withdraw money out of on a regular basis. Now you do pay tax on that money. So it's not, it doesn't have as much advantages as the, uh, the 401k or the HSA, but there are other advantages that you can take advantage of, and that is borrowing money. You can actually borrow against your stock account using margin or using a line of credit against your assets. You can't do that with a health savings account or a Roth. So you just have to decide what is more important to you. Do you want the tax benefits or do you want to have the option to withdraw your cash at any time for any reason? It depends on what your personal goals are, which one that you're going to choose. So now that I have maxed out all of the tax accounts, now I'm moving on to my brokerage account. And it's really similar to the other accounts. I have mine set up to move money on a weekly basis into different stocks. I like to choose individual stocks when I am investing in the market. When I started investing, I put my money into ETFs, into VTI and VOO, the Vanguard, um, just total stock market uh, index funds, because that is what I knew. I didn't know how to invest in particular equities. But now that I'm a little bit more experienced, I like to choose companies that I really believe in. And I don't want to invest in companies that I don't believe in. I don't want to be an investor into ExxonMobil or to um, Philip Morris and just different companies that I don't really believe in. I want to choose the best companies that I think are going to change the world for the world that I want to see. But I have it set up the same way as my other accounts where every single week money is moved out of my checking account directly into the stocks of my choice. Right now, I really believe that 2022 is gonna be the year of value. Growth stocks are being beaten down really hard. I still believe in um, my strongest conviction growth stocks like GoDaddy and HubSpot and uh, Zendesk and Twilio and all the great technology companies, but I think it's going to be such a tumultuous year with inflation, with um, rate hikes, by the Federal Reserve that value stocks like Walmart, Costco, those are gonna do a lot better than the growth stocks. But who knows, it's gonna be a wild year and I am very excited to be an investor into these stocks because there are going to be some great opportunities. If stocks get really beaten down like growth stocks, then this might be the perfect time to get in when they're um, lower in value and then ride that wave back up so they will reach new heights. Now, how much are you going to put into your brokerage account? That is the real question that you have to ask yourself. I can answer it for myself, how much I feel comfortable investing into my brokerage account, but you really have to ask yourself, how much do you feel comfortable putting into the stock market based on your income? Does your income fluctuate? Do you have a family? Are you trying to save money for other big life goals like a car or a house? That's the questions that you have to ask yourself before um, deciding how much you're going to invest every week or every month into the stock market. And I like to go through the budget before I decide on that number. So let's talk now about budgeting. Everybody knows that I hate budgeting. I talk about how much I don't really enjoy um, writing down how much I'm purchasing on toothpaste or um, how much I spent at Costco or the grocery store or just whatever purchases that I want to buy. I know that I am not a huge spender, but that the little things really add up. So what I like to do is just create the big bucket funds. So I like to create sinking funds for 
um, spending categories. I know that I'm going to buy food every month um, and I know some of my bigger goals that I want to achieve. So I would recommend writing down what are some of those really big financial goals that you want to hit. Do you want to buy a house or a condo or an apartment or a co-op or a townhouse? Whatever it is, type of living situation that you want to buy, create a sinking fund for the down payment, create a sinking fund for maybe any repairs that might need to be happening on that property. Real estate has a lot of costs associated with it in general, just from the down payment to the maintenance, to the expenses of just running a household, buying furniture, cleaning, whatever it is that you have, create a big fund of a house fund and put a number attached to it. And how long is it going to take you to reach that number? If you, if it's a really big number, you may need to be longer or you may need to contribute more money into that particular fund. Same with your other expenses. Generally housing is the most expensive. So start with your biggest category, your housing, or maybe that maybe your car that you want to buy, create that category first and then go down to the smaller accounts as you go. So for me, I don't have a particular house fund, but I do have a replacement car fund. So I know that my car is getting older and that eventually maybe in five years, maybe in 10 years, I'm going to need a new car. And I always know that my car always needs maintenance that I hate when you have to have the oil change, you have to pay for insurance, you have to go get, um, I don't know, the fender, uh, the bumper fixed or the paint redone or the leather redone. For me, those expenses always surprise me. So I create a big car fund and I constantly put money into that fund. I, also I know that I am going to want to go on vacation. I get a certain number of vacation days from my employer. So I know that I am going to want to go on trips throughout the year that I am going to want to go skiing or want to go to a beach, want to go to Hawaii, Florida, California, wherever. I just am going to want to get away from my work and go somewhere different, go see some part of the world. And it is 2022. So hopefully we can go somewhere international. We can cross borders and go see different countries and different cultures without having it be a massive hassle or headache to um, try and go somewhere else or have to quarantine in a different location before you come back. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I have created a sinking fund for my vacation. I already know that this summer I will be going to Sparks, Reno, Nevada to a conference during the summer. So I'm already putting money towards that so that I can go to Lake Tahoe and go on an excursion and just know that I have money set aside for that trip and not have to think about what I am spending during that actual time that I am going. Some other sinking funds that I have created. We already talked about my car sinking fund, traveling, a new computer. My computer works great now, but I know that um, someday I will have to replace it. And I'll probably replace it with a really nice laptop. I have a desktop now, so I'm already putting money aside for a new computer. I have a home repairs um, fund that I put money into for different things, new furniture, new outdoor plants, a new fence, grass, whatever. I have money that I am putting away for that purpose. And you might only be able to put into each account $5, but it really does add up week after week, month after month. The more that you put into this account, the more um, safety that you will have and the better you will feel in the long term. One thing that I know for sure is that in order to hit long term goals for myself that I've got to have some type of plan. I have to have some North Star guiding me towards my goals, towards my end goal that I know I want to hit when I didn't have a plan. That was when I got into so much trouble when I uh, lost my house when I was broke 
when I was heartbroken, I didn't have a plan. So the first thing I did was come up with where do I want to be in one year? Where do I want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in 10 years? And just take consistent steps towards that goal. You don't have to take massive steps. You just have to take tiny steps till you reach that goal and take t tiny steps consistently and you will eventually get there. And for me, that is through money systems, through setting up transfers from my checking into all of these different accounts toward my HSA, Roth IRA, or just into a sinking fund. For my budgeting, I use YNAB in order to track all of this information. And I don't like to keep track. I, I know that if I have to keep track in my head or if I have to keep checking in to buying individual investments that I just won't do it, that life will get in the way, that my dog will wanna go on a walk or I'll have to go to dinner with someone and that I will forget to do something. So creating systems really, really helps um, you achieve your long-term goals. If you want to follow me on my financial journey or just learn more about investing, money, finances, subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and remember, make good money choices. Till next time.